Intern, good, you made it. I'm glad the tram brought you. Goodbye, ma'am, goodbye. Thank you for coming to the zoo. Hello, young sir. Hello, older sir. Hello, young sir, hiding behind the older sir. Welcome to the forest zone. Much smaller than our safari zone, but that's all right because we didn't really have a lot when we got started on our forest area in turn. And I'm hoping that by breaking everything up into zones, we will have some time to dedicate to these amazing forest animals. Also, check it out. I think it's very nice. I think it does a, does a quite a good job of just showing off some of the beauty of the more temperate forest animals that we can have in our world. And these guys, of course. The dandy peafowl. How are you doing, good sir? Look at that. Look at that beautiful tail. Oh, absolutely gorgeous plumage. Absolutely gorgeous. You know, we really should let the kids collect all of the stray feathers that they find and take them home. Specimens are very important to keep interest and curiosity up in turn. Ah, but yes, let me show you around. Uh, as you can tell, we don't have an entrance yet. And I actually wanted to consult you and ask you, what do you think we should do for the entrance? I was thinking trees. But, you know, maybe plants is kind of a cliche thing for me, just perhaps. So I was going to ask you, what do you think we should put here at this entrance? Ooh, good, my research on my wooden arches is now complete. Let's get a couple of those puppies down. I want to put one here. Watch out, young sir, and this sir, little sir hiding behind the young sir. Watch out, peacock. Also, I almost put that right on top of you. My apologies. <gasps> Look at the leafy green. Oh, these beautiful ivy plants. I love it. Okay, so I was hoping, you know, get a little variety. But, you know, maybe putting an arch, just like a wooden arch right here in the middle where everyone walks. And a whole bunch of giant trees over here would be nice. That's an option. We could put maybe a little animal exhibit up front. That's an option. So you let me know what you think in turn. And then we'll, we'll look over the options. Um, just leave the notes on my desk. I, mean, I know you're always uh, shocked into silence as we're here. So busy. Let's see. All these people are walking. All those people seem exceptionally happy to be looking at our beavers. And we've got our beautiful little endangered species fountain right here with our lovely pink lady slippers. And then, of course, you saw our peacock. Hello, good sir. How are you? Oh, yeah, he's handsome. Oh, what's this? Endangered species challenge. The bosses have now texted me. The Endangered Animals Alliance is offering your zoo a free endangered species that you already don't have, that you currently don't have. However, the Alliance wants proof that your zoo is committed to conserving endangered species. Provide the Alliance of photos with at least three different endangered species from your zoo, and the Alliance will give you a free animal. The animal must be happy for your photos to qualify. Oh, let's take it on! I will be very happy to see what the results will be. However, I don't know what endangered animals, hello sir, you are not endangered, that we currently have in this zoo. Oh, we do have a catfish. Hmm, yes, 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 but this is the peacock area. It's got a nice little peacock cove. No one's up in the nest box right now. Have their little berries here in the bilberries. They've got a little bit of water and a misty spring to keep everything nice and temperate. But you know, our peacocks are now free roaming, so they can kind of go around and people can come in and get a good look at them if they want. Let's see, and then we'll look at that in a second intern. It's very exciting. I don't want to spoil the surprise. We have our educator right here. We've got a little entertainment center with some pretty awesome vines decorating the back of this building. Hmm, I'll we'll have to check out those catfish in a second. We've got our beaver family, our very happy beaver family, who's doing quite well. I can't wait until we can get, oh, look at the little baby being so cute. I can't wait until- Oh, the other little baby being so cute! No wonder everyone's so excited. I know, they're so cute, aren't they? My little beavers. Ooh, and look, there's more pickly slippers up here. Hello, beautiful plants! Oh, pardon me, sir, pardon me. Oh my goodness, this place is crowded. Hmm. The catfish is hungry. Well, intern, let me introduce you to our little eating area. It's a little eating sort of restaurant slash area thing with some really cool columns. I was going to take these columns out like I normally do, but I just couldn't because oh, they just look so awesome, like little trees. Like we're in this, this shaded forest area. It's very nice effect. And over here, look at this. We managed to put the columns somehow right into the donation our little donation box, but people still use it. So they slip the coins in and it goes into this little tree column. It's very neat looking. And also our catfish are having some problems. We do have catfish now. Yeah, did you, oh, did I land in the water? Okay, good, I didn't. But you can look right in here and you can see the catfish. We did have some issues with a couple of catfish that I got earlier. For some reason, they just won't eat. So if they refuse to continue eating, even though they have all of the different options for food, I will have to discuss with Zoo Master Ben what their problem might be. Let's go ahead and get them some of these guys. Maybe I'll eat those guys and that'll satisfy their hunger. Let's let's jump in. Are you ready? 
Now this might have some leeches because we are in some wetlands. Oh, it's very nice down here. Catfish! Excuse me, catfish! You have so many options. Would you please eat? We are quite concerned for your well-being, you see. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous animal. Please eat Will's catfish. I don't think they're endangered. I'm trying to recall. Let's see. Are you willing to go for them? Chasing the lunge lungfish. Alright, good. Come on. If I have to tempt you with lungfish, then I will tempt you with lungfish. Come on. Come out of the rock and eat them. Come on, you can do it. Please, I'm really worried about you. He's, he's just holding still again. Come on, you can do it. E -e -e -e. Hmm. We may have to consult with Zoomaster Ben about the mystery of why our catfish aren't just swallowing everything. Usually catfish go for absolutely anything and everything. Oh, oh, oh good. It ate the lung, the lungfish. Okay. So we might just have to supply them with lungfish instead of all of these fancy feeders that we stuck up everywhere. Let's get some of those fancy feeders out then. All right, you. Hey, what you doing? No need to get stuck. All right, he's also chasing it, so he should be okay soon. So let's go ahead and get him some more food. Hmm. Sand eel, arctic cod, live food, burbet. That looks, that looks enticing if I was a catfish, I suppose. I guess we're just gonna have to manually feed those some common roach, some European perch. It's not like uh, the tank will will suffer from having more fish swimming around in there to admire. So that'll be that'll be quite nice. But yes, so this was kind of a spur of the moment addition. I know we didn't have these guys in our forest exhibit before, but I wanted to build a building that we could put all of the different little little shops and things in. And then, you know, suddenly I'm looking over here and I'm like, you know what, an aquarium would be really cool. And suddenly we ended up with an aquarium. And now we have catfish, let's see, who are doing much better. So it seems like we just need to manually feed these guys. Look at that. Because they've got krill right behind him, but he's just not interested in touching it for some reason. And they've got like all these fish. I gave him tons and tons of different food options. I wonder if it has to do with uh, these rocks, because I can't seem to swim over these rocks either. Eh. Eh. Why? Why rocks? I'm supposed to be able to swim in here. Hmm, maybe it does have to do with the rocks. I wonder. They seem to be able to swim over them okay though. Hmm. You're gonna be able to eat from it? Let's keep an eye on them. I didn't expect that we'd get so distracted just trying to keep an eye on uh, catfish maws. Yeah, they swam over it just fine. Alright, let's put in a couple of European perch. Whoa, those perch are huge. That should make a good meal for the catfish. Who has currently gotten himself stuck, it seems. Oh, he's sleeping. See? He's sleeping in the, the branches. This is a really nice exhibit, actually. I hope our catfish do well. I will consult with Ben. Look at the perch go. Wow, it's so pretty in here. But yes, I will consult with Ben to make sure that everything is to their liking, and hopefully they'll be okay. But this is a really nice area, and look at everyone so excited about our beavers. But that kind of wraps up what we had in our forest area, in turn. So I'm going to show you the... Oh, where are you going, young man? Do you know where you're going? The animals are over here, sweetie. Come over here. We do need to rebuild our playground, which we will do as soon as they decide to assign this zone of our zoo enough stars that I can do that. But we also have an area for some new animals, and I've got some things in mind. This exhibit has actually been carefully prepared for a very specific animal. And I will show you that animal in just a second. I forgot to add in a little, a little fence. Let me jump the little fence right there. Make it easy for my zookeeper to get in. Also, do you like the little bridge? I love the little bridge. It, the water comes over from the beaver area, runs into a little stream that then goes over here. And I have a feeling what we'll do, see here's the big pond, and then the little stream comes into these exhibits, and we'll continue it into this exhibit. Which I'm thinking we might have cranes and a nice gazebo. Like we'll put a gazebo kind of in the middle of a lake, and we'll have some really beautiful cranes that kind of occupy this area. Uh, I'll show you in turn actually all of the different animals and you can leave some notes about the ones that you're interested in seeing The ones that make you curious the ones that you want to learn more about Let me know which ones those are from the wide variety that we have to pick from for this zone of our zoo 
This is an endangered zoo, so as usual, we try to focus on endangered species. But, you know, it's fun to add in some other guys now and then, too. So we've got the boreal forest. Um, and here, none of the extinct, but we do have the Eurasian brown bear, which would be very interesting. The grizzly bear. A uh, saber tooth cat. Um, I think that one's, for now, that one's off the list. We might come back to that one. The musk deer. We've also got, which one are you? Hmm. Hmm. This beautiful nameless crane. My goodness. And let's see, is it vulnerable? It's vulnerable. Ooh, it's just a nameless crane. Well, I'll have to ask about that. Let's see, what is this, little monkey? My goodness, there's so many options now. Nope, it's a little dinosaur. <laughs> no wonder I didn't recognize it. The Norwegian lemming. Which is not currently endangered, but holy moly, it's cute. So we could definitely have like a little area for the kids to look at those guys. We've got palm uh, cockatoos, it says, but I'm pretty sure this is not palm cockatoo. <laughs> this is a Eurasian eagle owl, not currently endangered. We've got the common raven, definitely not endangered, though they're very smart. Wolverines, which are vulnerable. We've got the gray wolf, which I'd argue about that not being endangered. It depends on the area you're talking about, I suppose. The moose, who is huge, huge and noble. We do have the critically endangered Eurasian lynx. That would be a really nice addition to our zoo. Then we've also got, uh, not really the temperate grassland, guys. I don't think this is going to be the place for them. But the temperate forest, that's a pretty wide variety. I don't think we're going to be adding a lot of the apes and monkeys into this particular zone of the zoo. We might save that for, our, uh, for the most part, for our Asian zoo. These guys are northwestern African, though, so hmm. Maybe we'll put them in the safari at some point. European badger, not endangered, but very cute. Asiatic black bear, hmm. No status on it. Vulnerable, there we go. The speckled bear, vulnerable. Absolutely, uh, actually I do believe that the speckled bear is more of an Asian animal. If I'm thinking of the right one, speckled bear, huh, South America. This is definitely not the one I'm thinking about then. If it's a South American. Oh, the Andean ones, okay, yes. I'm mixing it up with um, the bear that lives mostly in India. It's actually the most aggressive kind too. All right, let's see. Definitely not adding this guy. No, no, that's for the dinosaur zoo I will open again one day. Let's see, Frasian follow deer. There's quite a few deer species. We could have quite a bit of fun with those. This one is endangered too, and it's very cute, so we could add that one in. Cute factor always helps with getting donations. We have the red deer, European follow deer. These ones are more island deer, so we might save them. Oh, they're adorable though. Let's see, Tasmanian Devil, probably not for this kind of an exhibit zone. We'll save that for another zone. The Mandarin Duck, so many animals to choose from. <gasps> New Child Cat, Condonian Giant Gecko, <gasps> so cute. That's definitely more of a jungle sort of animal though because that is from the island of New Caledonia. I actually have quite, <gasps> the Echidnas, they are here. Oh my goodness, Echidnas, you're so cute. Oh, you're so cute. I could see them being added into this exhibit, even though they are, are Australian animals. So we'll have to decide where we want to put those guys, but they're adorable. Koala, oh man, so many things. Kookaburras, kiwi. See, I think those would be more like an island special sort of thing, like things from Australia, New Caledonia, um, New Zealand. Those might be more of a, like an island special that we could have one day. Come on, catfish number four, you can do it. I wonder if he is getting stuck. Maybe if we try taking out all those rocks. We've got the money from the move, so let's just go ahead and take out those rocks and see what happens. Let's see if he starts eating things. See if that helps at all. Please eat. Okay, they're chasing the food around. Let's see if that helps them with, the, with their eating at all. Okay, we'll sit over here too. But yeah, intern, oh my gosh, there's so many things to pick from. Spanish lynx, oh goodness gracious, the European otter. Oh my gosh, the platypus, wild boars, European wildcat. I think that one's endangered. Yep, that one is also endangered. Let's see, the win wisnet. Whis wisnet? Hmm, interesting. I've never even heard of some of these guys. The world is gigantic and full of animals that you just never expect. 
All right, let's see. And then we've also got the wetlands. And I think we are actually going to add in a few more wetlands animals. And the critically endangered greater adjunctant. I'm not sure how we would pronounce that actually. Oh man, it's very beautiful though, very, very beautiful. The English name is derived from the stiff military gait when walking on the ground. Ooh, they're a four star too. They're actually from Asia, but I could see us adding them here because this is kind of a wetlands forest zoo. Uh, what we're going to add in today and what we have prepared an exhibit for is actually some a little guy that I think you're going to enjoy quite a bit. Ooh, the alligator snapping turtle. We definitely need some snapping turtles. They are native to where I grew up, so I have a bit of a soft spot for them. Those catfish, yeah, those catfish are endangered. All right, but intern, we have prepared an exhibit today. And it is indeed a wetlands exhibit. It has insects, it has water lilies. It's got a little bit of a mix of wet and dry land. It's got some misty spring to bring up the humidity. So it's definitely a wetlands creature. I hope we can start getting a little bit, a little bit of your, um, a little bit of your curiosity wetted. But we are going to add in today the water mongoose, who is endangered. The water, well, or low risk, depending on which one you're looking at. I get all sorts of conflicting responses. All right, the water mongoose, is, or marsh mongoose, is a medium-sized mammal, but a large mongoose. Weight ranges from about 4.4 to 12 pounds, or 2 to 5.5 kilograms, with an average range of about 5 to 9 pounds, or 2.5 to 4.1 kilograms. So basically like a small cat, I think. Let's see. Mm, pretty long. About two feet long. Let's see. And the, the tail can add another two feet. Member of the mongoose family and only members of its genius. Let's see. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Found primarily throughout sub Saharan Africa with a preference for permanent freshwater habitats bordered by dense vegetation such as marshes, reed beds, and estuaries. The marsh mongoose is an important member of the community of animals inhabiting these swamps, where deoxygenated water limits aquatic life to various air-breathing fish, frogs, insects, snails, and mammals. Interesting. So it is a voracious carnivore, consuming any form of meat it can catch, as well as a wide variety of fruit. Vicious carnivore. Such a teensy thing is described as. But let's see. We are gonna no no new shelters for it yet, but I think it'll be okay. Well, since it's a vicious carnivore that consumes anything it can get its hands on. Let's see. Throw in a couple extra fish so it has something to gnaw on. But we've got we've got some things for it to eat. So let's go ahead and we're going to add in a wee little female mongoose. And a wee little male mongoose. And then let's climb in and uh, check out how they're doing. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Look at those little feet. Carefully prepared home for you. I hope you enjoy. Oh, look at that little tail. Look at that little tail. Oh, where'd you go? Did you go in the water? <gasps> there you are. Oh my goodness, you're so cute. Little mongoose, huh? I'm familiar more with mongoose eating. Um... Oh, 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 oh. Oh, look at you. Look at it run. What an interesting little gait you have. And off it goes. Sniffing the other mongoose. Oh my goodness, they're really, they're really something. I think that the, the guests are definitely going to enjoy this guy. Alright, now the catfish are no longer starving to death. So it was those, those silly, silly nasty little, little rocks. Well, we'll leave those nasty rocks out of here for you, you guys. And you should be okay now. Poor little, poor little catfish. Alright, so our little mongoose are in here. I think that that's going to be a very popular exhibit once it gets going. Ugh, but we listed off a ton of different things in turn. So you think over some of those different animals that you saw, and then we will be adding quite a few of them into our zoo once we get going. I'm definitely thinking that we're going to add in that beautiful endangered bird next. That'll be the next big project that we work on. There we go. But for now, let's just snap a little picture of the mongoose. Ooh, look at the little mushrooms. I love the mushrooms. We'll make more mushrooms and more more spread. Ah, oh, I love it. I love how each zoo, like zoo, has its own little zone now. All right, let's see. Come here, mongoose. I need a picture of you for the bosses. Where'd you go? Up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. Here we go. Gotcha. All right. Well, that's absolutely adorable. <gasps> look at it. It's so cute. 
so cute. Okay, okay. Well, intern, it has gone on for quite a while, so I'm going to work on getting the next area prepared for that beautiful bird and adding more little mushrooms because they're so cute, they're so foresty, and I love walking in the forest and seeing mushrooms. <gasps> And our pea fowl is expecting, that's very exciting. But you have a lot to stew over in turn. What kind of entrance should we make? What should we do with that school of children suddenly arriving? What kind of animals should we add in here next? We need to make this very interesting. I'm thinking of making a deer exhibit with some various deer who uh, have like a jeep tour going through it. So we could do a jeep tour with some deer. That would be very exciting. The beavers are exceptionally popular. And what I plan on doing is making more waterways come off of their little lake so we might have another half of the lake bordering over here maybe we'll put in some crocodiles there's quite a few options so you think about it in turn and we'll continue working and then we'll go over some of your notes and we'll see what the appropriate thing is to add in next so huh. well i'm gonna go get a drink in turn and i will see you back here after our lunch break okay Bye bye